another edition of the Night Report Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me is my co-host, Richie O'Leary, and Rutgers beat reporter, Craig Epstein. Guys, uh, Richie, I talked to you yesterday. We were talking about recording today. I was like, uh, you know, I don't know. It depends on how Rutgers does. If they win by 30, I guess we could we could record. I said that verbatim, and they yeah. ended up winning by 30 yesterday. <laughs> so obviously a great day for Rutgers basketball, getting things back on track, keeping the NIT hopes alive. Uh, three more games left in that season. We have a little bit of a recruiting update. We have uh, some updates on where Rutgers basketball signees are doing in their respective state tournaments. Uh, but first, our presenting sponsor is Night and Day Apparel. Calling all Rutgers students, alumni, and fans. Are you looking for a new and unique Rutgers merchandise? Night and Day Apparel has you covered from t-shirts to hoodies to drinkware and pet accessories. Night and Day focuses on providing the Rutgers community with exclusive one-of-a-kind tailgating products. As you can just see with Richie's Trapezoid of Terror, you're not going to find that anywhere else. Nope, unique. Be sure to check out all the links in today's podcast description and to the website and social media so you can stay on top of everything night and day, including new merch drops and promotional announcements. Shop now and keep chopping. Also, if you use the code Rutgers Rivals, when you go through checkout, you'll get 10% off. So always a good little thing to add on there. Plus, we've got St. Um, Patrick's Day coming up, so you gotta get, you know, got to get your St. Patty's Day gear, maybe for uh, maybe for Richie O'Leary, a little, little lad over there, if you can't get him a St. Yeah. Patty's Day shirt, but, you know. I, I have enough. It's okay. <laughs> um, additionally, we are brought to you by the Cut app. Uh, we've got a new sponsor. I love betting and betting on anything, sports games, uh, who's fast. That's what Cut allows you to do. The Cut app is a peer-to-peer -peer social betting platform that's legal in 40-plus states. Cut has customizable odds, tracking abilities, and an entire social network with group chats, user profiles, and rewards. Uh, all payments, no need for Venmo, and you can use our code Believe Rutgers. that's B-L-E-A-V, Rutgers, for a 10% uh, welcome deposit bonus. Uh, don't forget to use that promo code. Um, Cut, put your money where your mouth is. So we got to download that and, and check that app out because uh, some crazy odds. I'm, some... I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out uh, how this whole thing works, and we can make bit, maybe bets on how many times we'll say a certain word during the podcast. Oh, I, I, can, <laughs> I can tell you how many times I'm going to curse. So <laughs> setting over. At least people like can make some money off of it now. That's true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, let's talk the soups game. So Rutgers won at the rack last night, 82 to 52. <clears throat> uh, they scored exactly 41 points in each half. This is, I mean, this is just such a, a crazy outlier performance for Rutgers recently because they've struggled so much on offense. And, you know, it's always nice to get a get-right game against one of the worst teams in the um, power, or not the power five. And as a high major, Michigan might be the worst high major team in, in hoops this year. Uh, they, they just had no real effort for most of that game. Rutgers had a, a lead a huge lead basically the entire game. I think they started off on like a 12 to one run. Um, they just hit everything. They started <clears throat> off the game, seven of seven shooting. They started uh, the first 15 minutes of the game. They shot 16 for 22, had a bit of a, a dry uh, scoring drought. They went like six minutes without scoring at the end of the first half and beginning of the second. But other than that little hiccup, this game was all Rutgers. The defense was outstanding. The offense looked like, you know, they had, different people in their bodies shooting the ball for them. Uh, just an incredible performance by most of the team. Uh, Craig, what was your take? You were at the game. W what was the environment like there? Because I heard I wasn't there, but it sounded great on TV. I know Jerry Carino made a point to talk about it in his press in the presser about, you know, this is a game that had bubble like atmosphere. Was was the atmosphere that great? And do you think they really fed off that and you kind of used that momentum to, to really charge supercharge the offense? Yeah, I mean, it almost just feels like covering this game like you're just kind of spoiled just because it's like like uh, karina said and like yesterday it was you know during the circumstances this isn't you know it hasn't been a great season for rutgers basketball they're most definitely not facing a great team in michigan but the atmosphere was awesome the place was just about i wouldn't say it was a complete sellout but it was just about sold out the student section was really packed to the gills and it's just yeah from the get-go i mean rutgers gave them a lot to cheer about early on because like you said they started seven for seven got out to an early 14-1 lead and from there on it's just it was basically almost like a, a party to be honest for the most part i mean like you said yeah they had that five and a half minute scoring drought but it just goes to show you really just how bad michigan is the fact that rutgers went five and a half minutes without scoring a point and they still went into halftime up by 15. I did feel like, you know, you, you come out of second half and you're a little nervous just because you don't know which way you know, the things are going to go. If if Michigan somehow 
brings it back to single digits, then maybe it starts getting a little hairy because, you know, this Rutgers team, as we've seen in the past, can go on, you know, five, six, to some 11 minute scoring drought. So you, you get a little nervous, but r- right, th- right off the bat, Cliff gets a, gets that N1 and Rutgers goes on a 9 0 run and goes back up by 22. And it's like the game's over. And it's just like, you can kick your feet out, get a Jersey Mike sub, and just, you know, sit back and watch, watch the ass whooping because this Michigan team is just really, really bad. I mean, it's just, there's, there's no two ways about it. They, they're just watching offensively, defensively. They just look. They just look lost on the court out there, and just Rutgers took advantage and credit to them for, you know, to get to this point in the season. I mean, they do still, like you said, they still have the NIT uh, trip possibly on the line, so you are playing for something. But, you know, sometimes it uh, can be a little bit hard to get up for games. But that, I guess circling back, the fans the fans were awesome. I'm happy you cursed. <laughs> that's I'm one just, for the bet. I'm, that's one. There we go. <laughs> I, I, just, oh, ask I, I, I mean, that's not really a curse. That's two. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was a really impressive performance. It's just not on the offensive end, but the defensive end. They really were just like surrounding the entire Michigan um, lineup. Anyone, anyone that was on the court, really, they didn't give many open shots. And when they did hit, get those open shots, they still shot poorly. <laughs> so, just a really good defensive performance. Really good offensive performance. Um, dominated the paint, um, forty-eight to eighteen, which is just un, unheard of numbers right there. Uh, they had no one that could stop Cliff. Obviously, as you yeah, can you're tell, about points in the paint, not uh, not rebounds. What right? did I say? Points in the paint? Yeah. Uh, you I said they said... dominated the paint. I just wanted to clarify. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Points in the paint. Sorry. Um, although I, I think the rebounding numbers were pretty significant too, if I recall. I had them pulled up. And now they they had thirty nine exactly on each side. Oh okay, never mind. I take it back. Um, but yeah, forty eight to eighteen points in the paint is just like insane. Yeah. Um, no one could stop Cliff. Um, I don't even know. Like the turnover margin was insane too i think it was 14 to 5 like that's yep. yeah and then like you said on offense they just had i'm looking now a 12 0 run 11 0 run another 12 0 run like a 9 0 run it's just like it's it was just a really good performance and it honestly looked like the guys were just having fun for a change like there's been games where they're all they're all kind of sad and upset they're they're down in their dumps they're down 12 15 even and then you see this game and you, you see everyone smiling they're throwing half court lobs to cliff and stuff and like it was just a good, uh, good little game for them and a good bounce back. So now try to end it on a high note. We've got a couple game, a couple winnable games. Yeah, I think winnable's a stretch. I would say Ohio well, State's one of the hottest teams in the Big Ten right now. Yeah. They have to play at Nebraska, who's a totally different team on the road versus or at home versus on the road. Mm-hmm. And then you also play Wisconsin, who Rutgers does, in fairness, uh, seem to have their number as of late. But going into the Cole Center is never easy. So I, I don't think there's an easy game left on the schedule, honestly. Um, I'd say they're winnable, <laughs> though, for the sole fact that they've beaten two of these three. All, did they beat all three? No, two of the three, they right? Did, they did beat Wisconsin, and they did beat... Uh, Nebraska. Nebraska, but they didn't beat Ohio State. That was the game That's like, what, mid-season yeah. that they lost by four. Home game, though. You know, new interim coach. You never. I know they're hot right now. But it's very easy to turn around in basketball, so we'll, yep. we'll see if uh, they just start going in the, the dumps again. I'm, I guess I'm, if I'm you're more confident, I was gonna say if you're Rutgers, you're probably looking now to play just a little bit of spoiler on, on like it's the last few years they've really been the team that's like had the really the nerves you know cranked up because they're the team looking for the tournament. But to be honest, the tournament probably ain't happening this year, so mm-hmm. they're probably so Nebraska. I mean, this is a this is a big game for Nebraska. They pretty much like. Because they're, they're kind of like Rutgers from really 2020. They win, like, all their games at home, but they lose, like, them all on the road. So they really uh, lost to Rutgers could really, you know, kind of hurt their resume. And Wisconsin, we've seen all year, is a team that's kind of iffy. So they uh, lost at home would definitely hurt their chances to, if they lose to Rutgers. And then, Ohio, like you said, Ohio State, probably the hottest team in the, in the Big Ten right now. And I don't know, maybe – but although at the same time, maybe you're facing them at a, at a better time because – by the time you get there, maybe the, maybe they'll cool off a bit. Maybe they'll come down back back down to earth a little bit. And like you said, it's a home game, so I guess you never know. But to be honest, I don't expect them. I don't know right now. I don't really expect them to win any of these games. But as you said, I also didn't think Rutgers would win yesterday by thirty. So you just never know with the with Rutgers and really the Big Ten. Yeah, I, I would I would say Nebraska is basically in the tournament. Um, they're twenty and nine right now, ten and eight in the Big Ten. They have two games remaining. Uh, home game versus Rutgers, and then at Michigan. You got to think if they win any of their remaining games, including games in the Big Ten tournament. Like even if they lose out, if they go twenty and twelve, you're okay, gonna have a hard nice. time keeping that team out of, out of the NCAA tournament. So I think Nebraska is playing for seeding right now. 
Uh, they're 41st in the net, which is obvious, or sorry, 43rd in the net, um, which is obviously uh, a really nice place to be, um, which is the second highest ranking they've had all season. They were ranked 41st uh, a couple days ago before their loss at Ohio State. But, I mean, this is a team that's the top. They've won four of their last five. Uh, they've won a lot of big games at home. Like, they beat Minnesota at home recently. They beat Penn State at home recently. They beat Wisconsin at home. Ohio State at home again. Uh, Nebraska at home. They beat Purdue at home. Like, this is a team that is basically like Rutgers, like you said, a couple years ago at home. They're not an easy out at home. Um, but I, regardless, this is a good positive step that Rutgers beat a team they should have beaten and in resounding fashion. And if you look at the metrics of this game, defensively, this was the best game that they've played, uh, according, according to Bart Torvik's uh, just the defense, since the St. Peter's game, the second best defensive game of the season. And it was also the best offensive game of the season. They had a 122.3 adjusted offensive rating. Uh, and that was the only the second time all season they went over 120. The other time was against Seton Hall. And Seton Hall, we were shooting the lights out too. So Rutgers was just incredibly efficient yesterday. Uh, offensively, they shot almost 70% around the rim. They shot 40% on high volume from three. Um, you could just tell they were letting it fly, especially early. Uh, even late in the game, you know, when we're up 20 some points, it just seemed like everybody who was putting something up, like the rim was like two or three times bigger than it normally is. It just, everything was going in. Uh, it was nice to get some of the, you know, the, the walk-ons in late in the game. Uh, Aiden Terry had a couple assists. Uh, Zach Hain had the layup. Um, first yep. His first uh, basket in his career at Rutgers. I thought Gavin, it was weird in the first half how he didn't get a single minute. Uh, I think Pike explained that after the game as, you know, the, the guys playing were just playing so well that he didn't want to mess with that in the first half. And it makes sense when you, I think they were up at one point by almost 30 in the first half before that lead eroded away a bit. Uh, but Gavin, while he has struggled recently, I thought he had some really good minutes in the second half. He had that, uh, that nice three, which I don't know if he is as comfortable, uh, you know, just putting up a shot like right off a pass, like, cause he, he got the pass like probably four feet behind the line. He took one dribble, got it right up to the line and just canned it. So I wonder if he's more comfortable off the bounce than he is off of a pass. I, I don't know. That's just speculating, but he had four rebounds, one assist. He, he only played 11 minutes, but I thought he looked arguably better today than he did probably in the last month or yesterday. I'm sorry. Uh, it was nice to see Noah get back into the action. He had 11 points coming off the bench. Austin Williams had some nice minutes. Um, but I just, I think the two studs of the game were by far Jeremiah Williams, Cliff Omorori. I, I, can, I don't know why I can never say his name right. Cliff Omorori. Um, Cliff had 19 points and 15 rebounds. I don't know if 15 is his career high, but it's got to be close to it. He went over 900 rebounds for his career yesterday. Uh, Cliff and Cliff and Jeremiah together went 18 of 23 shooting, which, uh, it's, that's pretty good. That That's like <laughs> over 70%. So those two guys just had insane games. So it, it was just nice to see a lot of uh, harmony on offense. And it was primarily because uh, that high pick and roll was just working all day. Uh, Michigan was playing a lot of drop coverage, and we were just feasting on them. Because Jeremiah Williams is a very mature and patient ball handler primarily, and he's not going to make any kind of mistakes. And Michigan's guards just couldn't uh, – it's not like Jeremiah Williams has like a blazing quick first step, but Jeremiah Williams was able to hit a lot of acrobatic, uh, contortionist type shots around the rim. Uh, so just everything was working yesterday for Rutgers. It was a game that you really have to kind of use a magnifying glass to find a lot of flaws, but uh, that, th those games are nice for, on occasion where you don't have to like scrutinize one thing too much or too little. Uh, it was just a fun game all around and, and Rutgers arguably had its best game of the season. I think it was their best game of the season, in my opinion. Yeah, it's funny. I saw it at one point, I forget when it was, but Jeremiah did like kind of a Euro step, laid it in, and you know, the mm -hmm. place is going crazy. And then I saw going back down the court, he basically did like a Euro step kind of dancing, going back. Yep. And I was honestly, I was waiting for the tee because the way things, the way the refs have been going now with the technicals, there were a couple of points yesterday where I was like, they were doing kind of a celebration. I was like, 
Last game, that probably would have been a technical, but it seems like hopefully at least that they're kind of backing down off that. Even even at the end of the game, I saw Jeremiah kind of got in a brush up with the uh, the Michigan bench, but that didn't lead to, thankfully, that didn't lead to anything and no technicals. And that's why Pike kind of just basically pushed him kind of back to the bench, didn't want anything to happen there. But mm-hmm. hopefully that's uh, hopefully that's kind of a thing of the past was technicals. And I noticed, and I noted that it was funny how Rutgers had 41 points in, in like 15 minutes. I was like, damn, they... They almost they almost matched their total from last game in 15 minutes. I was like, it's just shows you just how shows you just how you know efficient and how good they were. It's just crazy. And like you said, I was I was I on the Zach Hain. I was like, congrats to him. But I was thinking from like a fan's perspective, is that like I don't know what to compare it to, but when like the fan favorite kind of walk on kid hits the hits the whatever his first basket or whatever, and he, and the crowd goes crazy. For, if you're on like the opposing, I guess fan base, is there a more deflating feeling than that? Because even Rutgers experienced it this year when uh, Izzo's Izzo. son hit mm-hmm. his first career basket. It's just like I don't know how to explain this, but like, I, I would almost him. rather fuck you just. Get, what were you saying? It's like I hate him. I'm like fuck yeah, that guy. I don't like, care. I would if almost you're rather you out. just leave the starting group out there and like lose by forty than like have mm-hmm. the walk-on kid hit his first basket and lose by thirty. It's just like it's like. It's, it's salt in the wound. It's really what it it's is. It's the human victory cigar. It's like Brian Scalabrini <laughs> yeah. hit, hitting the three at the end of the game to, mm-hmm. to ice a playoff series. You know, it's you, don't, you never want to see the <laughs> yeah. backups come in and have success against it's your backups still, but, yeah. like, it just doesn't feel good. No. Um, Cliff, by the way, 15 is his second highest ever, and that is the third time he's done it this year. He's also done it against Bryant and uh, Nebraska in overtime. And his career high is 17 against Stonehill, which was also this year. So, pretty good year rebounding wise. Looking for Eclipse uh, previous years. Yeah, no, he's been fantastic this year on the boards, as as he kind of always has been. But you know, mm-hmm. last year he averaged 9.6 boards a game. This year, 8.9. Uh, yeah, he's had some yeah, down years, great. which hurt a little bit, but. His minutes have been down this year too. I think that's intentional. Where he's mm-hmm. playing about three minutes less this year than he did last. Yeah, five man Oscar Palmquist coming in yesterday though. <laughs> That's another note I had is the last few games uh, against Maryland. It made sense to go small ball because we were mm-hmm. down by such a huge margin most of that game. Um, but Pike continued that that trend this uh, last night. I know Ogbol <clears throat> was listed as questionable, uh, mm-hmm. but I think the clarification after the game was that he could have yeah. went. Um, Antoine Wolfolk hasn't really played, but when Cliff came out. They went to, back to that small ball lineup, and it did pretty well. In fairness, I mean, Oscar kind of just has to like make do at the center position. Uh, you know, he is tall enough to be a college uh, center, arguably, but he doesn't have the bulk uh, or the play yeah. style really to do it. But he held his own. I mean, Michigan has a big lineup between uh, Cheddar and uh, Terrace Reed. Like they have two really big interior guys. So I was surprised they went. Uh, with the, the small ball, and I was kind of impressed that they were able to hold their own as much as they did, given that Cheddar is like what six ten, Reed is like what around there too. Or Cheddar's listed at six eight, but he looks a lot bigger. Um, and Reed is obviously close to seven feet tall. So, um, are we just prepping for like next season? Like Ace Bailey five man, hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> I think they could have a lineup of death. If they they had oh, if they had Ace at the at the five, Mo- let's just assume Watt comes back. Let's assume mm-hmm. Jeremiah Williams comes back, uh, and then what? Dylan and Jer or Dylan and who else? Maybe Simpson and and or J, J- Mike. J Mike, yeah. Jeremiah, D- Dylan, yeah. Yeah, it'd probably be J Mike or Simpson, whoever. Wow, I gotta yeah, be honest, that's, that's an insane lineup. <laughs> I was going to say, the more I'm thinking about, though, I think there's a serious... I'm starting to think there's more of a possibility that Cliff comes back. Like, I don't know. It's just, to me, it feels like... what Like, look at it... Like, I'm looking at his options right now. He, yeah, like he said, he, I don't think he's an NBA-type <clears throat> player still. And he could go overseas. But the way you look at college basketball right now, these guys are, are not really, you know, 
pushing themselves to leave college the way between NIL and everything. I don't know. It's just I, I, for, like we talked about, it's, we felt like for a while it's 50-50, but now I don't know. I'm just feeling like – and plus, uh, like you said, yesterday he got to 900 – or he, uh, he got to third all-time. He's got like 900 boards. If he sticks around another year, he could, mm-hmm. again, legacy-wise, climb those ranks and really become a Rutgers great. So I don't know. Just to me, I feel like there's more of a possibility. Cliff comes back than I felt you know, in, you know, know, maybe a couple months ago. So, so here's the issue there. there. There's a couple things. Number one, it's it's really going to depend if Cliff wants to increase his legacy at Rutgers versus make a shot at the league. His only shot at the league is to leave this year, unfortunately. Um, and that's even that's a very slim, slim shot. But in order to get to the league, you have to go. He's probably going to go to the G League. He's not going to get drafted. He's not going to get even like an undrafted free agent. He's going to sign straight up with a G League team probably. And you'll get, it's different because you'll get professional coaching. The G League's not like it used to be. It used to be like when it was the D League, it was garbage. It's like an actual minor league development system now. A ton of players from the G League are now in the NBA and have G League experience. So it's not like it used to be at all. Um, he'd get 24-7 development, um, not have to focus on anything other than basketball. And you're getting professional coaching. The older you get, the less likely they're going to take a shot on you because it's all young now in the NBA. It's all based on potential. It's this is honestly his last shot at the G League if he wants. Once you go overseas, everyone's like, yeah, he goes overseas for a couple years, and then NBA you might look at him. No, once you're overseas, that's it. Especially when you're what, 21, 22, 23, even. The minute you're overseas, you're done. Like that's that's your career. So, it's it's interesting. I I don't, and then he can't get NIL too, which plays a big factor too. So, I don't really know what you do there. Like it's there's ways around it, sort of. And I'm told when he graduates, there's a way to change his visa a little bit, but that's obviously extremely complicated with the governments and all that stuff. So yeah. that's another story in its own right. But um, I, I just don't know. It really depends if he wants to cement his legacy. Previously, I would have said 60-40, he's gone. And I've been pretty adamant about that. I'm leaning closer towards 50-50, but I still don't think it's 50-50. I still think there's a good shot he ends up leaving. But it's it's a lot closer than it, it was previously from everything we've heard. So we'll see. Does he want to cement his legacy and make maybe get a banner next to Gio and Ron in a couple years, or does he? I mean, he probably still gets one regardless, actually. But um, yeah, it's it's really going to depend. Do you want to like increase your legacy? I guess if you want to call it that. And I was or thinking this too. Is he playing? Is he playing his way into like? No. Big de- no, 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 oh, no, 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 okay. no, 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 draft. no, 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 I was gonna say, uh, defensively, is he playing his way into you know, big 10 defensive player of the year, uh, conversation? Because he's been he's Still been not. remarkable. <laughs> what were you saying? He's he's been good, but like it's it's they're gonna give it to one of the wings or guards, probably, yeah, that's but just, yeah. that's how you always get it, unless you're averaging like we're talking like three, four blocks a game, like which what, what's he at? He's probably close to that, right? Yeah, averaging at least three blocks a game. Is he? He has 3.1. Hey, you know what? Maybe he is. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, Actually, I mean, I do think he's going to be... He's already been announced as like a national defensive player of the year finalist uh, yeah. on a couple of ranks. I think he's going to be one of the top two or three uh, targets for the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. Well, Imagine back-to-back... Or, yeah, back-to-back years. They have to, to, back-to-back-to-back. To back. Back to, yeah, yeah, that's right. Back to, <laughs> yeah. Although, well, one of them was the same person, but still, it's a, yeah, <sighs> remarkable. Three years straight, the, big, yeah. the Pike would have the Defensive Player of the Year in the conference, which uh, I'm sure has been done, but it's not common by any means. Not for Rutgers, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, one other thing before we move on from this game. Uh, Jalen Llewellyn, is there a bigger drop-off in, like, Big Ten over the past couple of years, like that's just a, what a hell of a drop off from like Princeton because he was well, like what one of the top transfer he, prospects. I know he got hurt. Yeah, he tore his ACL I think in the off season or early in the season. I forget last year and then uh, <clears throat> yeah, recovering Damn, from what that. A, what a drop off! It's kind of sad to yep. see. Yep. Maybe the Ivies just aren't that good. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Some people would have you believe elsewhere, elsewhere or otherwise. I'm sorry. Um, One bid league. Yeah. But uh, that's kind of all I had on this game. Is there any other things about last night's game that you guys wanted to hit on before we uh, move on to some other topics? I want them. I want Michigan to keep Jawan Howard so bad. It just, just. Well, I mean, yes. Listen, he's, listen, he's a former does. Big Ten coach <laughs> of the year. It's a down <laughs> year. I mean, these things happen. Just give him some more time. Did he win Big Ten coach of the year that one year? Did. 
That's disgusting. Yeah. I feel, like like they, be, I feel like they should retract that just on principle, honestly. Name a guy with NBA experience that's went to the college level that has worked, that doesn't have college experience. Because Eddie Jordan sucked. Mike Woodson sucks. Juwan Howard sucks. Like, it's just a constant cycle of suck. What's his face, Jerry though? Stackhouse. Jerry Stackhouse sucks. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, the SMU guy whose name is escaping me right now. He's coach of the Nets. Did he coach the Nets? Uh, um, yeah, Larry? He had college experience before that, I believe. Larry Brown. Larry Brown. Yeah. Kansas. Didn't he have college I was going to say, Larry Brown. I don't know why. Larry Brown won the national championship at Kansas. He won the yeah. their first ever national championship with Danny Manning in 88. So he had a good deal yeah. of success in the, in the uh, college ranks. I'm talking about an NBA guy that never had college experience and then going to college. Nah. Like, and it's just never worked. Uh, I mean, not saying Maybe not that this is the case, but Damon Stoudemire seems to be off to a <clears> decent start at Georgia Tech. Um, Oh, maybe he's the outlier. It's still early. Sure. It's still it's his first yeah. season, and they're not making the tournament. He's recruited well. He's developed some guys well, but again, they have to not. Be, to be fair, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here now. Um, Rice, director of player development, um, Arizona assistant, and Pacific head coach. Is that what Damon Stoudemire was? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. My bad. Yeah. I thought he was. I knew he got hired from. The Celtics, I assumed he was a long time. Uh, I thought he was too, to be honest, until I just looked it up. But he has some experience. Maybe Pacific. I don't know if they're any good, but whatever. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so we had a big time recruit on campus last night. Uh, yes. In Blair Academy guard in the class of 2026. Uh, his name's escaping me. Rich, what was Darren his name? Darren Rippey Jr. Darren Rippey Jr. Uh, he actually got offered shortly after his visit, or maybe on his visit. So what are you uh, hearing about him, and how high of a level of recruit is this kid? Yeah, so he's number 25 in the country for 2026. So Big I know time. we keep saying that it's going to be hard to maintain this level of recruiting, but they're they're doing a good job. You could see now what's happening. Now people are starting, and every recruit, number one, when you talk to them, they're like, oh, yeah, they keep telling me I can follow up Ace and Dylan. I can keep following up Ace and Dylan. Jalen Harrell said it to me yesterday. Darren Rippey Jr. mentioned it. So you're seeing them start to build off that, that recruiting momentum a little bit. Um, a lot of people have been saying, like, yeah, you know, it's a down season. Like, all these recruits are going to say, like, what the fuck? Look at this offense. I don't want to play in that. That's not true whatsoever. They don't care about a single season almost ever. Like, unless your team went from, like, an NCAA tournament team to uh, an eight-win Michigan team, who also, by the way, eight-win Michigan this year, has the number 33 recruit in the country coming in next year. You think that he gives a shit what they do this year? No, he doesn't. Well, I mean, he would like for them to be better, I'm sure, but he's not there. He doesn't care. Recruiting is so different. Like you, it's multiple seasons and multiple winning seasons, and that's why Rutgers has built that momentum. That's why they got Dylan. That's why they got Ace, and that's why they're doing well in the recruiting trail. But Darren Rippey Jr. has just about he's got 15 offers so far. Not a ton of big-name offers so at, at early on. Illinois... Oklahoma State, Rutgers, St. John's, Syracuse, TCU, A&M, Washington are the big names. Um, they're doing good. It's going to be interesting to see where his recruitment kind of takes him. He uh, Just to getting him on campus this early is pretty good, though. Um, I think he's a Brooklyn native, if I recall correctly. But he's playing at Blair Academy. He also spent some time up in Connecticut at a prep school for a little bit. Um, he's just a really good prospect. Um, someone to keep an eye on over the next couple of years, but... He's uh, nowhere near deciding, by the way. He's 2026, so way down the line. Yep, it never hurts to get in early with these kids, uh, no, especially the, the high-level ones. Um, so <clears throat> it'll be a fight for sure, but uh, glad we're getting that offer in early because, Pike, I mean, year after year, yeah. you look at the guys he offers, especially the guys he offers early, and they almost mm -hmm. always take a massive jump in recruiting ranks. And it's hard yeah. to take a massive jump from 25, but uh, yeah. It's glad I'm glad to see him continuing to you know fight for the the top recruits because that's that's the new norm I guess and the new standard that they've set that's those are the types of guys that they want to land year in and year out it's not always going to happen but those are the, the the priority a one targets so glad to see it continuing on and, and he's a smart kid too I forgot to mention high honor roll 4.0 GPA kid so <clears throat> it's always a plus. Yeah, that's something Pike clearly loves. He was shouting out Cliff for having something like a 3.9. Oh, no, it was Andre. Yeah. Last night in his, All right, he's uh, talking about Andre Hyde had the 3.93. Yeah, that was kind of a funny moment. And then, yeah. and then Jerry Which, uh, asked him, uh, 
asked uh, Pike about was is that was that your GPA at at, at, at UConn? He was like, yeah, if you add up all the years, it's kind of a funny line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three point nine three is insane. Like that is insane for <laughs> anybody, regardless if they're an athlete or not, mm -hmm. and for Andre to be able to be a full time high major basketball player and to put that kind of uh, GPA out on the on the in the classroom is just you, you can't say more, much more about it. It is so impressive. Um, I, so. I will say though, I do know for a fact that Cliff is one of the higher academic students on the team. Mm -hmm. um, IT major graduating this May, May June, whatever it is. I think it's May. Um, IT major is no joke either. No, that is impressive. Not at all. Yeah, he's he. I was I've been told multiple times like he is one of the smartest kids easily on the team, and that's no knock on anyone else. It's just he's he's that smart. <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, to to think like English isn't his first language. That's the crazy you know he part, is yeah, yeah. obviously he's been in the U.S. now for probably almost a decade, but still mm -hmm. like that is not it because you still probably have to process that in your native language in your head. Like that's mm -hmm. what I've been told about like people who speak other languages. Like you still think of it through in your your native language. So yeah, just so impressive all around. Uh, yeah, regardless of whether or not we got the results on the court this year that we were expecting, like everybody on the team is so easy to root for. You, you gotta mm -hmm. love all these guys. Um, yeah. Let's talk about some guys who will be on this team in the near future. Uh, we have some of our uh, 2024 recruits deep in the playoffs in their respective states. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna start off with uh, Lathan Somerville. His Richwood high school team uh, is in the sectional finals in Illinois. And a lot of these uh, different states have wildly different structures for their playoff structure. So I'm just gonna mm -hmm. kind of go through one at a time. So uh, Richwood's made the sectional finals in Illinois and they're in the, uh, the 3A class. So there's 16 teams left in the 3A class in Illinois. Um, they play Metamora High School tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, in their previous playoff game, uh, Lathan scored like 32 points to to lead yeah. Richwoods to a win. Featured um, on Sports Center. Featured on Sports Center next uh, yeah. Instagram account as well. The guy is just it, it, it. If you haven't watched Lathan Somerville highlights, please just go do it because to understand what this guy can do at 6'10", like he's got a legit mm -hmm. guard offensive game. Like he has the size to to you know bully guys in the paint and he does that pretty well he's he's able to to get to the block easily he's able to back guys down mm -hmm. he's got the athleticism to kind of dunk it from anywhere inside the paint but he also is very comfortable pulling up he's very comfortable from beyond the arc you know he's got a really good mid-range game this is a guy who's got a full offensive game uh that most big men do not have so really excited about him and his team plays tonight um ace bailey's team is in the final four in Georgia in the class 7A category, which is the largest mm -hmm. uh, grouping of schools in Georgia. They play Wheeler High School to, uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, I'm sure these games are somewhere on YouTube as well. So if you want to watch them live, there's going to be a way to watch them. I don't know of the way to watch them, but they probably will be available. Um, do some digging Ace, today. What did you say? I said, I'll do some digging today to try to see if I can find the links. If I do find them, I'll probably post them on the uh, message boards or Twitter or something. So keep an awesome. eye Awesome. Um, Ace has been dominant <clears throat> as expected in the playoff mm -hmm. run. Uh, they beat up on Norcross the other night in the, mm -hmm. the uh, Elite Eight of the 7A tournament. Ace had like over 30 points and like 17 rebounds, something crazy like that. Um, and if you... We're on the boards. Dylan Har you would have known Dylan Harper had the state semifinal game in the New Jersey non-public B playoffs, Something I believe. Like that. Yeah. Um, they played uh, Hudson Catholic last night, which was a really close game. Uh, Hudson Cl Catholic is led by five-star guard Todd Pettiford. Um, I believe Hudson Catholic was up by like seven to nine points at one point. Todd Pettiford mm -hmm. unfortunately hurt his knee, and he did not play in the second half. And the game was really close up until about the middle of the third quarter. And then Bosco just started its run. Uh, Dylan was incredible. Their center, which I always mess up the, his name, uh, Kiner, Kiner Asperilla. Kiner Asperilla. He's a tw class of 2026 kid. Mm -hmm. uh, he, is, I mean, when you have a kid who's almost mm -hmm. seven feet tall in high school, it's very hard to stop. But yeah. he was 
tenacious on the boards. I want to say he had like between six and ten blocks that game. He, if you were driving in the paint against him, you were not getting a clean look. Uh, probably you were getting it blocked. And Dylan was just he was tenacious on defense. He was hitting some clutch shots. He obviously finishes around the rim, rim better than arguably anybody in the country at the high school level, and he was showing that last night. Um, he got to the line a lot. He had a lot of free throws. Just kind of the game you wanted to see from a guy who was the number two player in the country. And they play in the state final against uh, St. Peter's Prep, I believe. Um, is it this weekend or is it next week? Mon- I don't have the Monday date. at 5 p.m. at Franklin High School. Monday, 5 p.m. at Franklin High School. There was a bit of drama in the the other uh, semifinal in that bracket. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw St. Peter's hit a shot at the buzzer to beat Bergen Catholic, who's obviously uh, Bosco's big rival. Uh, That would have been an epic showdown, but this will be as well. Yeah, I think it's back-to-back years that Richie Rosa did that for St. Peter's, the hit back-to-back of just winning shots to send his team. I think so, yeah, I believe so. He's that kid's incredible. It's just like every, I feel like every time I look, he's hitting a big shot. Hear me out. I mean, great first name. That just explains it all. <laughs> <laughs> Spells it correctly too, not with a T like some of you, you guys hate you on the boards. Do it. <laughs> I don't understand yeah. where it came from. Well, people were busting your chops saying, you know, you changed your name. Why didn't you add the T when you had the chance? It's like, uh, oh my God, I hate you. <laughs> I know we were talking about before, like the most the most disappointing thing in the in basketball is to have like a walk on like hit buckets in front of you. But I don't know, man. Walking off the court when there's like a court storming essentially. Like, I mean, like I'm watching the the video replay of this game and it's just like that's just defeating. Like watching the Bergen players just walk away. Oh yeah. Yeah. Also you're allowed it's... to storm the court in, in high school basketball, right? <laughs> like, oh fucking Jay Bilas, you piece of <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's brutal because, like, the last. Cannot, no. I don't know. It doesn't. <laughs> whatever. It's, it's too, too high. It hit the over. <laughs> High school is just different, too, because a lot of these kids, they've been playing together since they were in, like, elementary school. So yeah. this is the last time these group of kids will ever get to play with one another. For some of these kids, the last time they'll ever play basketball in a competitive setting outside of maybe some gym, like, some YMCA runs or something like that. So. It just means so much more to these kids uh, than arguably losing to finish out a college season, even. So yeah. So um, I'm trying to see. I have the shot actually. If you want to, if you guys want to see it real quick. Yeah, pull it up. Yeah. It's... But that should be a good matchup. Actually... I mean, yeah, it, although Don Bosco is going to play its rival Bergen. Don I mean, Bosco's going to. They're going to. Yeah, probably. probably. But it'd just be interesting to watch Dylan and Richie go at it. Oh, he did that Steph leg flail thing, too, trying to mm-hmm. draw the foul. Oh, um, yeah, that's incredible. I, you can only imagine the feeling uh, oh, coming off dude, the court that like that. Yeah. Kids in heaven right now. Like, that's <laughs> just, that's that's such a good, like, feeling, getting lifted up by your teammates and everything. Like, oof. Mm-hmm. Um, I also want to thank everybody who signed up after our, our interview yesterday with John Newman. Uh, the feedback we've gotten has been uh, overwhelming. Um, we, uh, from what we've heard, they've had a lot of new signups uh, since our interview yeah. yesterday. Uh, for anybody who didn't listen, it's definitely worthwhile because not only do we talk about the Scarlet Ticket promotion through Knights of the Raritan, mm-hmm. but uh, John does a great job of kind of giving a, a lay of the land in terms of NIL, where things are headed in the college world. Yep. Um, and so if you haven't listened to it, I definitely recommend going back and listening to yesterday's pod. It's pretty evergreen. But also, if you haven't already, if you're not a member of Knights of the Raritan, I, I really do implore you to, to think about signing up, especially until you have until March 10th to qualify for the Scarlet Ticket promotion, which, I mean, the value of that alone, if you want it, is tens of probably ten to $15,000 uh, in terms of uh, all the tickets that you'd be getting. So it's it's worthwhile and it's such a great cause john outlines all the reasons why it's a great cause as as do we in yesterday's pod but i'm not gonna uh wax poetic on that but i I do want to thank everybody who did sign up um and did uh send 
kind words to the Knights of the Road and yesterday because they said that they got an overwhelming amount of feedback. So great to hear that. Uh, good news too. Before we sign off, 3 p.m. today, um, cornerbacks are participating in NFL yes. Combine. So keep an eye out for Max Melton because if he tests like we kind of expect him to test, he's probably going to take a nice little leap in the draft stock at least. Yeah, it's it's this is uh, the, the combines just. I don't necessarily watch it. I follow what's, uh, you know, all the measurements and stuff like that, but it's, mm -hmm. it's nice to, it feels like the, the body's not even cold on the NFL season and they're already like yeah. fully into next season already. So the NFL, uh, the cycle never ends. So it's draft season, season or what, 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 what us Jets fans call it? The Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> the 10th overall pick you guys thinking, uh, I don't know. Offensive I don't even know. Probably an offensive yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've yeah. seen Joe Alt. Get, I've seen him mocked. Uh, you better pray he gets that that far. Yeah, well, probably, I, probably be some offensive lineman. I don't think he makes it to 10. Uh, from what I've heard mm -hmm. and seen, it sounds like he's the number one offensive lineman in this draft, and there's yeah. three or four teams in the top 10 that are looking at <clears> potentially <throat> taking an offensive line. So maybe they, they, move, they move up and take him, but uh, th there's going to be some good options. There's there's four to five really high level tackle prospects, so I don't mm. think you can really go wrong with any of them. Oh, believe me, they can go wrong. I've seen in the past they can go wrong. <laughs> they can and have. I mean, <laughs> what was oh, yeah. who, they, who who got taken around Mackay Becton a few years ago? Oh. It was like Tristan oh, Wirfs. Yeah. Well, they were all pretty good yeah. except for. Um, well, that's what I mean. Like it, <laughs> it was the same kind of narrative going into the draft. It's like it doesn't matter who it is; they're all good. Yeah. You're all going to be, you know, plug and play starters, and then of course you guys draft the the, the only stinker of the group. Of course, and, Andrew uh, Thomas, and Becton. Jedrick Wills. Yeah, I know. Ty Becton, Tristan Wirfs. Yep. And guess which one yeah. Yeah. might not be in the league pretty soon. <laughs> no, he'll he'll get another shot somewhere. And he'll yeah, probably he'll get go shot. be successful. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> it's 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 the uh, it's the Jets way. I'm sorry, but. And then you got your uh, your backup quarterback's mom on social media causing it. Well, he's not going to be the backup quarterback that much Yikes. longer. So pretty soon he'll be probably like yeah. the yeah, Rams have... or Denver's problem. The Jets have given Zach Wilson permission to seek a trade, or in other words, uh, <laughs> LOL, we're going to cut you. <laughs> I think they did. I think they did that like halfway through the season. Yeah. Um, Although Richie, I mean, else. Like, JJ McCarthy to the Giants is this is this a possibility? Hell to the <laughs> no! If we're anything, we're trading up for a quarterback. It sounds like, and if I, you would hope, honestly, Jaden Daniels falls to, to a six. I don't know if that's going to happen or Drake May. I don't want Drake May personally, but I think um, Washington. Likes I'm all him. in think, on Jaden Daniels. I think wa it looks like Washington. If they get him, they, I think the Giants like him too, though. So is it possible the Giants move up to one for Drake May? What, are you going to go with another North Carolina quarterback and just suck again? They're not like, moving up to one. N yeah. Number one is staying put. They're taking Caleb Williams. Yeah. End of story. That's... And then Justin Fields is going to go to Atlanta, probably. It sounds like and Atlanta, then, yep. Yeah. And then Russell Wilson to Pittsburgh, and then to giant clusterfuck. Um, I do think <laughs> we get a quarterback. I don't think we go first-round quarterback, though. I think, uh, I think, they, there, I think they might I think take – I have a feeling they're going to take a, 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 you know, a, not, a non-quarterback at six – and then trade back into the first round yeah. for a lot for, yeah, for probably like a Bo Nix, Michael Penix, or even a JJ McCarthy if he falls think... if he falls. Bo Nix is gonna go in the second, I think. Penix probably first. It depends, because if Penix is healthy, so, like I think he's great. He's just not Penix, healthy. from what I understand, there's wide ranging uh opinions on him in the league. Mm -hmm. Like some there's literally I've heard people say they've talked to people in the league and they don't even have a draftable grade on him because the injury history is that bad. Yeah. And others say that he's like a fringe first round pick. Like he has had four season ending injuries in college, including two knees. So I think you, and he's gonna, gonna be twenty he's gonna be a twenty five year old rookie as well. So yeah. I think he while he did have incredible production in college, I think there's a lot of red flags there. <clears throat> also, which is dumb, but a lot of coaches think this way. He's a lefty, so you really need to build everything reverse. Like the, the Dolphins, are the, we the don't only have right team. In, <laughs> yeah, the Dolphins are the only team in the NFL right now with a starting uh, left-handed quarterback. And for a while, there was like a two to three year stretch where there wasn't even a single rostered left-handed quarterback in the NFL. So there's mm -hmm. an aversion to it, which is weird. But I think you're going to see JJ McCarthy go top ten. 
I think teams are a lot higher on him than uh, yeah. we probably would have otherwise <laughs> thought. For those idiots. Uh, I, I, mean, I don't get I, it. I, I like JJ. Don't, don't say us. Don't say us. I don't want it. If they take JJ McCarthy at six, I think that would probably. I'd be more shocked because I remember when they took Daniel Jones at six, I was like shocked. This would be more shocking to me, honestly. I don't think so. I disagree. I just Daniel I just Jones. Don't, I don't see him in in the oh, NFL that was either. taking him top ten was the Giants, and they took him at six, and that was that was like peak Gettleman hubris, where he <laughs> refused to trade. You know, he was gonna do dumb shit whether you wanted to or not. Like, oh yeah, you know how much he could have gotten to move back from two to six in that uh, Sam Darnold year, but he insisted mm -hmm. on taking a running back instead at number two. Like the the Colts rebuilt on the fly. They got. To move back from three to six, they got uh, like the 35th pick, the 49th pick, and a future second to move back three spots, and they still got an all-pro in, in, Quentin, in Quentin Nelson. So it's like, if you're gonna do dumb stuff, you're gonna uh, you're gonna get screwed over, and that's what the Giants did for a while. So we'll see what happens better. this year. We we, we are. We, I'm, I'm confident in Joe Shane. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm. Uh... It's gonna be an interesting draft, though. I I really yeah. think am I am I crazy to think Max Milton might be able to sneak into that like second round, third round? I think he goes second round. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Good for it's him. It's possible. Yeah. But. Uh, but we've kind of gone off the rails here. We really appreciate everybody who has listened, who signed up for the Scarlet Ticket promotion. Um, in order to do that, just to clarify, you have to be a monthly member of Knights of the Raven. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that came across clearly yesterday or today but that's that's how you pr qualify for that promotion you have to sign up by march 10th in order to qualify um but for me richie and craig i want to thank you again for listening this has been another edition of the night report podcast signing off